earth itself appeared to me so small that it grieved me to think of our empire, with which we cover but a point, as it were, of its surface. Cicero, the dream of Scipio. Hello again. Let's continue analyzing Cervantes' masterpiece. Chapter 41 tells the Clavileño adventure. As evening approaches, Don Quixote worries that the horse's absence indicates that he might not be the knight designated for this adventure. But Clavileño is finally deposited in the garden by four savages, recalling the theatrical representations at Camacho's wedding. One of these savages repeats Trifaldi's explanation that the knight, with his squire on Clavileño's haunches, will be carried to meet Malambruno, pointing again to the peg on the back of the neck that should be turned to begin the flight. He adds that both riders must travel blindfolded in order to avoid vertigo. Sancho vacillates again, claiming he is happy where he is. St. Peter's just fine in Rome, and that he wants to focus on his governorship. <laughs> it's another allusion to religious orthodoxy. The Duke extends the theme of Sancho's Christianity when he insists that the island will be ready for the squire no matter how or when he returns. Whether you return atop Clavileño as soon as his swiftness permits, or contrary fortune drags you back on foot, changed into a pilgrim, going from inn to inn and lodge to lodge, so long as you return somehow, you'll find your isle right where you are leaving it. Did you know Toward the end of the 16th century, there were major shortages of timber throughout Spain. This was due to the use of wood in the construction of ships for the Spanish Navy locked in ongoing conflicts with the Turkish Empire, England, France, and the Low Countries. Note that this idea that our heroes might become pilgrims wandering from end to end reads very much like their actual situation. The novel is the story of Don Quixote and Sancho's modernized pilgrimage. Together, our characters suffer a post-medieval crisis of religious and ethnic identity as they are forced to adapt to the new bourgeois reality. Two other details reinforce this idea. First, Sancho wonders if he can invoke God's help regarding the magical powers of Clavileño. Cover these eyes of mine and entrust me to God and tell me if when we cross those celestial heights, I can entrust myself to our Lord or invoke the angels for their assistance. Amazingly, Trafaldi asserts that there is no problem, for the giant sorcerer is a Christian. Malambruno, although an enchanter, is a Christian. Second, when Don Quixote expresses his gratitude to Sancho for agreeing to the flight, although a simpleton, you are a veridical man, the squire underestimates him and responds in a way that suggests racial mixing. I am not verdant, but rather brown but even if I were a mix, I would keep my word. Wow, green and brown, the hopeful colors of a vibrant multi-ethnic culture between Europe and Africa, but this is fiction inside fiction, right? Right before taking flight, Don Quixote expresses doubts about Clavileño, making the episode's most explicit allusion to the Trojan horse. He wants to check the horse's insides. I have read in Virgil, about the Palladium of Troy, which was a wooden horse that the Greeks presented to the goddess Pallas, which was pregnant with armed knights who were subsequently the complete ruin of Troy. And thus, it would be a good idea to check what Clavileño carries in his stomach. Trifaldi talks him out of this. Note that gender confusion continues as Sancho must ride side saddle like a woman in response to the discomfort of the wooden horse. The scene is the tragic apotheosis of our characters. Like Icarus, as they reach great heights, they fall. This occurs on two levels, literal and political. Literally, Don Quixote and Sancho think they soar above the earth, but the narrator lets us know that they are fools. Onlookers shout lies. Now, now you fly through the air, moving through it faster than an arrow. And the Duke, Duchess, and their assistant use great bellows to blow air on our heroes. Politically, signs of imperial power contrast with signs of failure. The narrator describes Don Quixote who rides without stirrups as if he were a figure in a giant tapestry. He seemed no less than a figure in a Flemish tapestry painted or woven into some Roman triumph. 
This alludes to the period's most expensive art form, which the Habsburgs used to spread imperial propaganda at court. Quixotic mission. Don Quixote compares Clavileño to which horse? A, the Roman horse, B, the Madrilenian horse, C, the Trojan horse. Correct answer, C, the Trojan horse. By contrast, Sancho fears that things will go horribly wrong. Is it any wonder that I fear that a legion of devils roams these parts and that they will land us in Peralvillo? His reference to a legion of devils undoes the previous imperial vision, and his reference to a town in La Mancha famous for its arbitrary justice undercuts the possibility of any justice, that is, any righteous, divinely ordained rule by the Habsburgs. A final anecdote told by Don Quixote reinforces the Clavileño episode's criticism of Spanish empire. When Don Quixote tells Sancho to trust Malambruno's advice to cover his eyes, he cites the case of a man named Torralva, who claimed to have flown from Madrid to Rome in 1527 in order to witness the sack of the sacred city by Charles V's troops. This is a doubly damning story. First, Don Quixote refers to one of the more shameful events of Spanish military history. Second, since Torralba confessed to the Inquisition that he was a sorcerer and that devils had flown him to Rome, the analogy does not flatter the knight and the squire who are also flirting with diabolic magic. Finally, Sancho's odd reference to Magellan suggests again the global scope of Spanish empire. That's all for now. Join me next time when we continue interpreting the most important literary masterpiece in the Spanish language. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.